Welcome. Family. Movies brief here. Today, I am going to explain a Chinese youth romance film called Be With You. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Ki Nian is a 24-year-old cartoonist facing writer's block. She has been told to create a romantic comic book, but she specializes in the action genre. Hence, whenever she makes something related to romance, it turns out awful. Like a girl who expresses her love by body slamming a guy through a concrete floor. The editor-in-chief gives Ki Nian's executive editor, Ming, a deadline before they have to submit the final version of a romance comic book. If Ki Nian is unable to create a good story, she will be fired immediately. Because of nervousness, she can hardly get her creative senses flowing. Ming sighs and explains that the readers should feel their hearts beat faster when they read the romantic story. A naive Ki Nian relates the heartbeat to heart failure because she has never felt that way. Ming hands her a bunch of romance comics and leaves her to brainstorm ideas before asking her to bring them in by 5 p.m. the next day. In the following scene, Ki Nian is on a park bench outside, drawing a heart like Ming had asked her to. While she is at it, a cute dog walks up to her, eyeing her beef jerky. His caller says that his name is Ki Bao. Since their first names match, Ki Nian thinks it's her responsibility to get the dog back safely to its owner. She gives him another piece of beef jerky and holds his leash. To her surprise, he seems to already know where his owner is. He runs quickly as she tries to keep up and eventually reaches the bridge by the lake. The owner turns out to be a handsome young man named Yan Shin. He turns around in a dramatic way as Ki Nian stares at him, finally realizing what the editor meant by a rapid heartbeat. When Yan Shin asks for the leash, she stupidly shakes his hand and embarrasses herself. She tries starting a conversation, but the man's answers are curt and dismissive. He offers to buy her snacks in turn for what the dog ate, but Ki Nian refuses. All of a sudden, the dog runs off in a direction, making Yan Shin trip and fall on top of Ki Nian. When the two are only a few centimeters apart, the dog jumps over them, making them lock lips. That dog is the best wingman of all time. Yan Shin immediately jumps up, while Ki Nian remains flat on the ground, trying to understand what just happened. She gets up and bluntly asks him for his number to contact him later. Yan Shin is stunned by her openness, but before he can reply, Ki Nian gets a call from the editor, informing her that she made a mistake and the deadline is in less than an hour. Ki Nian has no choice but to rush back to the office, but before leaving, she begs Yan Shin to wait for her until she returns. Yan Shin is confused, but he decides to wait out of curiosity. About half an hour later, he gets a call from his architectural firm and has to return home. He writes his number on a sticky note and pastes it on the bench for Ki Nian before leaving. But as soon as he turns around, the note flies away. Ki Nian arrives at the office and creates a two-page comic book about her first meeting with Yan Shin. The editor is impressed by the elements of the comic, like the unexpected kiss and the cute dog. She encourages Ki Nian to write more about the male character because it will surely be a hit. But to write more about him, Ki Nian will have to spend more time with him. She suddenly remembers that she asked him to wait and rushes back to the lake. When she arrives, it is already dark. Although she had expected that a handsome man like Yan Shin wouldn't wait for her, his absence still disappoints her. Yan Shin, on the other hand, goes to his office. He is a hardworking architect who owns a popular firm. His best friend and co-worker Shen is waiting for him in the office. Shen is close to Yan Shin's family, especially his grandfather, who plays the role of matchmaker every chance he gets. The old man wants Yan Shin to get married as soon as possible, but the problem is Yan Shin has never even had a girlfriend. Shen reveals that he was sent to tell Yan Shin about a blind date his grandfather has set up, but Yan Shin refuses to go. At night, Ki Nian goes to eat out with her friends. One of them is a professor at a university, while the others work in a firm. As they talk, some girls drop a bucket of water on Ki Nian from the floor above. The girls sheepishly come down to apologize on behalf of their drunk friend. Ki Nian's professor friend teaches the same university that the girls go to. Hence, when the girls talk about someone who broke their hearts, she immediately knows who they're referring to. It turns out that everyone is in love with a strict architecture professor. He goes to the university to break hearts every day, even though he only teaches for a month in session. The guy turns out to be Yan Shin himself. He is a university professor, alongside being the CEO of his firm. 
King Wu also reveals that he never remembers any student or colleague by their names. Instead, he calls them by their ID numbers. Unaware that her friend is talking about Yan Shin, Kinian brainstorms ideas on how to find him. At home, she writes a blog post about everything she knows about him, like his height and his dog's name, and asks the viewers to inform her if they know someone like him. One of the comments says that they have seen a similar guy at the university. Kinian decides to check if it is true and goes to the university the next day. The first person she meets is a girl secretly taking pictures of someone in the other block. When asked about a handsome man, she instantly understands who Kinian is looking for. It turns out that the girl takes pictures of Yan Shin and sells them to his fangirls for money. She has basically opened a merchandising business out of his popularity. When Kinian reveals she doesn't want his picture, the stalker is confused. To avoid having to explain, Kinian simply says that she is the man's girlfriend. Just then, security guards arrive looking for the stalker. Before running away, she asks Kinian to take the front seat in the architectural block's lecture hall. While she is at it, she slips a memory card into Kinian's bag so that even if she gets caught, her hard work won't be seized. Kinian takes a seat in the said lecture hall and is surprised when Yan Shin walks in as the professor. They lock eyes and Kinian waves at him, but he plays it cool and continues taking attendance. She notices a puzzle box on the podium and finds out that every year, Yan Shin challenges his students to solve the puzzle. The one who solves it can ask him for anything they want, but Yan Shin is sure that none of the freshmen can solve a puzzle so advanced. After the class, the girls take turns trying to solve it, but fail miserably. A few minutes later, he walks into the hall to notice that Kinian has already solved it. Surprised, he asks her to come to his office. She notices the memory card in her bag and brings it out, but Yan Shin seizes it. He connects it to his computer to find out that it has nothing but pictures of him. Kinian swears that the card isn't hers and her intentions with him are pure, but the comment doesn't make Yan Shin feel better. He puts the topic aside and asks her how she managed to solve the puzzle. It turns out that her father was also an architect and had boxes like it lying around the house all the time. She used to play with them as a child, hence, she knows how they work. She also explains an elaborate way to solve it, which impresses Yan Shin. As for her reward, she asks to be his teaching assistant so she can be closer to him. Yan Shin agrees, but claims that to keep her job, she needs to make him remember her name by the end of the week. Or she will have to resign from her post. Kinian thinks the task should be easy, but little does she know that Yan Shin doesn't even remember his best friend's name. To him, it is just a waste of time, but Kinian is adamant to win the challenge. Later, she tells Ming about her progress and writes a few more pages of the comic in relation to her recent conversation with Yan Shin. Ming loves the creativity and encourages her to maintain the post as teaching assistant, seeing that it helps her manifest ideas. On her first day at work, Kinian walks behind Yan Shin, reciting the day's schedule to him. She tries to make him say her name, but he repeatedly calls her by her ID number. As they talk on the stairs, the stalker girl clicks their pictures. Yan Shin notices her and gets closer to Kinian, just to spite her and give her something to talk about. A while later, he catches the stalker girl red-handed, but it is revealed that she is his cousin, GQ. He seizes her camera and asks her to apologize to Kinian for setting her up by planting the memory card in her bag. GQ refuses at first, but agrees when he promises to return the camera if she does as told. In the following scene, Yan Shin walks into the lecture hall to find Ming under the podium. She shows him a notebook with her name and even translates the name to Seven Year Itch so he can engrave it in his mind. Yan Shin quietly whispers that they can seven year itch after marriage and kisses her on the lips. That was confusing, but it was sexy. Just then, Kinian wakes up and realizes it was only a dream. In the next lecture, she decides to bring her dream to life and hides under the podium. But unlike in the dream, Yan Shin immediately asks her to come out and sends her to her seat. Yan Shin doesn't lose hope and continuously tries to make him remember her name. She even goes as far as to print her name on a shirt and change his laptop's wallpaper to her face. Still, he calls her by made-up expressions, much to her annoyance. One day, she is informed that Yan Shin won't be coming to university for a week because of some urgency at work in the firm, but he has left her a lot of assignments to do in his place. Kinian is distressed because she has absolutely no qualifications for this job and never should have received it. Also, when Yan Shin returns after a week, he will surely have forgotten her name. But 
After talking to his cousin, she finds out that reputation means a lot to Yan Shin. Hence, starting the next day, she does her best as a teaching assistant in his absence. When Yan Shin finally returns a week later, everyone praises Qin Yan in front of him, from the janitors to the teachers. Later, the two meet outside in the rain. Qin Yan hopes to be praised for her excellent work, but he gives her an F for trying too hard. Suddenly, a passing car splashes water at them, soaking them in puddle water. To help her, Yan Shin brings Qin Yan to the staff room and lets her change into dry clothes. After both are changed, Qin Yan points out that he already remembers her name but is refraining from saying it. Yan Shin neither denies nor confirms the claim. Instead, he asks her what her true intentions are. Qin Yan abruptly claims that she has a crush on him. As they talk, she trips on his feet and falls to his chest. At the same time, Yan Shin's grandfather enters the room. He catches them in the act, but cannot believe that his grandson has a girlfriend. The three sit down to talk, and the old man reveals that he had set up a blind date for Yan Shin. In a moment of panic, Yan Shin says that Qin Yan is his girlfriend. The old man doesn't believe it, and asks him to say her name if she really is his girlfriend. Qin Yan also encourages him to do the same. With no way out, he tells her name to his grandfather. Qin Yan adds to the lie, saying that she will always take care of his grandson. After the grandfather leaves, Yan Shin has no choice but to accept defeat and allow Qin Yan to continue working as his assistant. She is overjoyed that she finally gets to be with the man of her dreams and also write about him. Yan Shin, on the other hand, is secretly happy about his new assistant. In the end, even a cold and arrogant professor like him has finally started to fall for someone. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like. Thank you for watching.